Hello Fiber Friends! We have an exciting video today, I hope. <laughs> I guess we're going to find out. I was looking around and thinking what should we do for our next video. I have so many projects that are in process. They're already on bobbins. They're already on the carter. They're just everywhere. I have so many projects and I thought I have never been one to let that stop me from starting a new project. So today we are starting a new project. <laughs> Can you relate? I know I'm not the only one, but so many people have been buzzing about Wild Wool Farms and their incredible roll egg boxes. So I will have a link for that. I purchased the roll egg box from Wild Wool Farms and we are going to open this up and see what's in there because I have no idea. It's a surprise. I didn't pick out specific colors or fibers or anything like that, so I have no idea what's in here. And what I would like to try is to spin this and then weave it, whatever it is. That's my goal. I think it would be really fun to uh, spin and then weave and then just make some cloth. Let's make cloth today with whatever's in this box. That's our challenge. Is this a good idea? I don't know because I don't know what's in here, but we're going to find out. I'm sure we'll learn things along the way and no matter what happens, it'll be an adventure. I hope. So fortify yourself, friends, with coffee or tea or whatever you need and let's make some yarn. Let's cut in and see what we have. Oh my goodness. There are two in here. And there's a note. Thank you for choosing our Rolag box to review. We've also included a bat box if you would like to review it too. Okay, so I did I did warn them that I was going to do a review. This is so sweet. Our boxes are 10 ounces of fiber and a little surprise goodie. They can be a monthly subscription or one-time purchase. Each month is a surprise mix and color. <laughs> I'm sure this is awesome. I'm already tickled. This is amazing. We have a Facebook group. Cool. Cozy Up by the Fire with Wild Wool Farm. And it's for sharing and helping others with fiber questions. Wonderful. Love a good community. Oh my goodness. Vasquez Family Wild Wool Farm. Well... Oh my goodness. I was thinking that box was really big for roll eggs. I was like, maybe they're trying to keep them super fluffy in the mail. But this does make sense now. I knew this would be an adventure. So let's see if we can do this. All right, which one do we start with? I'll just start with this one. <laughs> I'm just like, that's so kind. Oh my goodness. This is lovely. A little there's a little enamel sheep you have to see this look how cute that is oh my goodness this is so much fun this is so much fun okay and this is what's in here so we have merino Coriadale, alpaca sari silk and angelina <gasps> and chocolate <laughs> and tea I love uh, chai spice from stash is one of my favorites if you put some coconut milk creamer in there, it's amazing. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Wow. This is, this is bats. These are stunning. Okay, let's take one. Let's open this up and see, because depending on how, you know, the fibers go onto the carter, you can get different layers of colors and wool and, <gasps> This is, this is really beautiful and it matches my shirt. I didn't mean to coordinate with this, but it, it worked. This is lovely. This is really lovely. I can see the sparkle from that Angelina. I can see some of the streaks of the silk in here. Um, I like the colors. They really balance each other. I think it, uh, you know, I'm always kind of picturing what it will be like when it's spun, and I think this is going to be a really beautiful yarn. I like the green, um, how that really kind of pops against those pinks and sort of peachy 
Yeah, this is really pretty. Oh, I'm so excited to spin this. Oh, wow. And then we have, do do box number two. All right, so this must be roll eggs. And this one I'm going to untie so they stay put because, <gasps> oh, friends, friends. Can you see my face right now? These are, these are gorgeous. Oh my goodness, these, these are amazing. These are amazing. I love these, love, love, love love these and look how many there are this box is just full of them oh my goodness they go all the way to the bottom this isn't like some kind of cushioning and then they're just floating up on top to look like a big box this goes all the way all the way down <laughs> there's just roll egg after roll egg after roll egg this is incredible we have moreno corriedale alpaca and angelina Amazing. I think today I am going to um, spin the roll eggs and uh, weave with the roll eggs because this is still going to be a fairly long video just to get that done. I'm just absolutely thrilled. Tickled, thank you. Thank you for the bat box as well. And let's, let's spin these up and then we're going to weave. I think I would like to use probably my Ashford E spinner. If I'm going to get these all done um, in a reasonable amount of time, I need to spin quickly. <laughs> so I do have a spin on two of those bobbins, but I have one available bobbin. So I'm thinking we should spin and then weave with singles. Because I so often hear people say, you can't warp with singles. You absolutely can. And I think we should do it. So let's do it, let's get spinning. I thought it would be good to quickly mention the loom that I will be weaving with so that the choices I'm making for this spin make sense because I have to consider what I'll be doing for the weave, right? So I am going to be using a Schacht uh, Cricut Rigid Heddle Loom and I am using this reed. When we weave, we number the reads. We'll say it's an eight dent or a 10 dent or 12. So what that means is how many threads are going to go in the slot and hole in the space of an inch. So if this is an eight dent read, that means that we have eight threads to go through the slot and the hole in the space of an inch, right? Um, so what does that mean for the spinning? Well, I don't really want to go thicker than eight wraps per inch. I'm planning for this to be a single. So eight wraps per inch means that I will have everything exactly lined up next to each other. Um, and that's not leaving a ton of room for the weft to be going over and under, right? So yeah, ideally sampling is always a good idea, but we can get kind of a general idea when we look at the, at the read and think, how is this going to fit with the over unders taking up some room between those threads? And how is it going to fit when we are putting eight threads into the space of an inch with the reed. So that will all make more sense when I do it, I think, if you're new to weaving. Um, if you're not new to weaving, then <laughs> this should be making a lot of sense to you. So as I'm spinning, I'm probably going to shoot for, eh, mm, worsted. Worsted works really well on this loom, so maybe a nine or a little bit closer to a DK, maybe 11. So I have my yarn gauge here ready to go. <laughs> so I can check it as I start spinning and make sure that the yarn I'm spinning is gonna be what will work well for me for this loom. So, all right, now finally, let's get back to the spinning. I, I do plan to spin these long draw because they are roll eggs and I love long draw for roll eggs. I'll just kind of just checking through, yeah, this is great. Um, you can kind of do a little pre-drafting motion with it if that helps you, but I think we are ready to spin. Get it kind of caught up on the leader.
Wow, this is drafting beautifully. Just, just lovely. Look at this blue, it's so vibrant. I love this. Oh yeah, this is great. This is an awesome spin. So let's check and see. This is another thing to keep in mind. If you are checking the diameter, the gauge of a woolen spun, just remember that when you pull on it, it kind of compresses everything down and it makes it narrower in its diameter. So if you want to get a better, see when I pull on it here, I'm getting closer to a sport. But when I let that tension off, it poofs up just a little bit. I don't know if you can see that. I hope you can. Um, and it's much closer, much closer to a DK or even, yeah, it's right as a worsted. It's right in there. Um, so be aware of what your fiber is doing when it is under tension, pulling against the wheel, and when it is relaxed, because that's more what it will behave like once it is in its final form. Just narrow them down a little bit. Overall, I'm okay with there being some thick and thin spots, like I said, but if there's something that looks like it might be a problem, then I can go back and adjust that. While I was spinning, my mind started to wander, as it does, and I started thinking about, historically, especially medieval time period in Europe, some of the extant garments that we have and textiles that we have from that time is scraps and little bits, mostly. We see that people would spin the warp in one direction, and then they would spin the weft in the other direction. And what that does is it allows the twist to balance itself out. All of those threads kind of come together. It makes a more sturdy fabric and you don't get the bias of everything trying to twist and shift with that energy into one direction that can really um, skew the fabric. And so I thought I should try that with this spin because I am using singles. I'm not quite half through the, um, the box of roll eggs yet. So I'm sure I have enough for the warp right now. It's an awkward fraction of the amount I've done. Maybe it's more than a third and it's less than a half. So maybe it's like three eighths of the way through. <laughs> um, so I'm going to pull what I have done so far off the bobbin and I'm going to finish it and I'm going to check the yardage because that will help me calculate the warp. And then the rest of it, this was spun in Z twist. And so the rest of it, I am going to spin in S twist. Actually, I'm gonna right now flip the switch on the E spinner so I don't forget and end up doing the rest. There it is, <laughs> it's Z twist, so yes. I will do the rest of it S twist, intending that to be the warp, or the weft and the warp will be Z twisted. So I'm gonna go finish that up real quick and yeah, I'm excited. I knew this would kind of develop as I went along and I, I'm very excited at this uh, little experiment of the Z warp and S weft. This is 
all skeined up and it is ready to wash and finish. I mentioned that I am going to finish this really hard, which means I will have some soap, I will go hot water, I will go cold water, I will go back to hot water, I will go back to cold water. I will be massaging it like it's bread that I'm trying to activate the gluten in. And then I am going to smack it around a whole lot. It's going to get thwacked up one side and down the other. <laughs> All of these things will help to kind of felt all those fibers together and make this single very secure so that it will withstand not only the tension that's required to weave, but the abrasion that happens with the with the heddle going back and forth and back and forth and having it in all those little holes and those little slots. It, it can rough it up. And so if we don't rough it up to start with, it can frizz and fray while we're weaving and possibly break a warp. We do not want that. Whenever I estimate yardages and things like that, I always round down. I would rather have extra than not. So it looks like I have about 162 yards. I was trying to see if I did a two yard warp, what would that look like in the heddle? So with 162 yards here, and then I divide that by two, So I, I'm going to say 80. So that's 80 two yard um, ends of weft, essentially. So if there are eight dents in that heddle, that means there's eight per inch, and I have 80, um, this is coming out to a really nice <laughs> uh, 10 inches in the heddle and that is a 15 inch heddle so that means I can just do 10 inches center it two yards of warp I'm happy with that that's gonna be great and hopefully I will have enough for the weft to um, be able to weave it and if not I can just give it extra fringe on both ends <laughs> this is it the very last roll lag and I have a full bobbin that's ready for weaving the box is empty I can't believe I did all these in a day I always put a little extra twist into my tail and there it is nice so I will be counting my yardage but I am going to let it sit there just for a minute while I get this all warped up so let's head over to the loom. I have my Cricut all set up and clamped to the table. I am using a direct warping method which means I have a peg on the opposite side of the table. I put my caked up warp yarn into a yarn bowl. I'm gonna put this on the floor because it's really convenient to just pull this off of here while this is on the floor it stays out of the way it doesn't get tangled and it feeds really easily so I am going to pull loops through the heddle down to the peg after that's all finished and I will um, feed one of the loops that go through the slot I'll feed that into the hole but it's actually a very fast method it's a lot faster than using a warping board like this um, I, I think so it's a good technique for a loom just like this
it's finished and I'm about to show you this fabric and I have a couple of takeaways that I do definitely want to share with you because I think these are important things to take note of in regards to this project. So I finished the entire project in one day. I started the video recording in the morning. I opened up the box from Wild Wolf Farms. Oh my goodness, if you need some fiber, go there. It's amazing. I spun all morning. I warped up the loom and I had it finished all the weaving before I went to bed. It's all dry and we're ready to take a look. So this was a one day project, but I don't want you to feel like that was a one evening project. That was a one day project, a very long day. But I enjoyed myself very much doing this. Um, here is the finished scarf and it is so beautiful. It is just gorgeous. I was really excited about a few things. Um, one was my warp calculation was right just spot on the amount of warp that I spun and then I um, set up on the loom and everything it was just right I had a little bit left over I did end up with this shorter I wanted two yards and I think this is probably if you count the fringe it's more like a yard and a half and that had to do with the length of my table <laughs> so I can adjust for that in the future um but I'm terrible at estimating weft. I did the math all wrong on that and I have a ton of yarn left over. <laughs> so that's exciting news because I still have some of this beautiful yarn. Some of the things I really want to share with you are about this weaving with singles and having the warp and weft spun in opposite directions. I want to explore this further. This is a historical technique. We do have evidence of textiles that have been preserved for whatever reason um, that people most often would spin and weave with the warp and weft in different spin directions, clockwise, counterclockwise. Um, and this fabric feels different than any fabric that I have woven. It truly does. And I don't know, I don't know how to explain it on camera. Um, I can hold it up and hopefully you can kind of tell. This fabric has so much, it, it has stretch to it. And this is just a plain weave. Th this is just over unders. This isn't like a twill or anything like that. This is just plain weave and it is a very, it's flexible, but I should make a note that I've I've woven flexible fabric before. Flexible isn't the right word. Um, stretchy fabric before, but it wasn't stretchy in every direction. And this is the closest thing I can I can compare this to that might make sense. Um, without being able to actually touch it is when we ply yarn together if we give it a good amount of twist it becomes very bouncy and very springy and that is exactly what this is feeling like it feels bouncy and springy and I've had fabric before where I could pull it and it would kind of skew but it, it would drape it would lay that way and this bounces back into shape. It's the coolest thing. <laughs> it's so neat. So now I really want to play with this fabric design, this cloth design of having the yarn and the weft spun in different directions. And truly, this is something that we can really only explore through hand spinning. I, I'm not even sure where I could go for commercial yarn that would be a quantity of weaving yarn that would make a fabric I want from the fibers that I want that would have opposite twist directions. I don't even, is that, is that even a thing? If I'm, if I'm unaware, please share and let me know because maybe there are people watching this for the weaving who are not spinners and they're curious. So do share. Um, but as far as I know, that's not a huge thing. So I'm fascinated and I need to do 
more exploration with that. I really thought that having this all done with singles, especially, and you can go back and look at the video, there was a lot of twist in my singles. Those were high twist singles and they were buckling in some cases where they were kind of crimping up and folding over and I was thinking, eh, it's a little too twisted, that's not great, but this is just a fun project and I'm sure it'll have some texture. That all washed out when I fold this cloth. I put it into a soapy dish just like I did to finish the warp after um, I spun it and I went to town. I mean, I was just dunking and kneading it and I had a little soap in there. I, I let the fringe just kind of do what it wanted to do and so it kind of looks a little, we're gonna call this rustic, but I love it. <laughs> this is a design feature. <laughs> Um, but I really went to town on it and I really worked it hard um, and when it was dry it just everything just came together and locked together and I can't find many there's one here and there but I can't find many of those coiled up spaces it's like they all just kind of relaxed out and then they all came together <laughs> that opposite twist it's like the ply didn't happen in the yarn, it's as if the ply happened in the cloth. It's the coolest thing. So if you're a spinner and a weaver, explore this because I'm telling you, this is a lot of fun. It's very interesting. And I wanna do whole garments with this kind of cloth. I really, really do. But <laughs> that will definitely take more than one day. <laughs> and for now, I have this cute little scarf um, just in time for July. When this video goes up, it'll be the first day of Tour de Fleece. So I am going to wish you all happy spinning and I need to go get some of those projects done that are just sitting on my bobbins.